welcome back to our show. And uh, today we have an exciting episode because we are going to San Francisco, California, right, John? Okay, this is our second trip to San Francisco. And yeah. we're excited, you know, to meet our friend, longtime friend. Five years ago, we met him. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see him back again mm -hmm. live here in Canap TV. So let's introduce him to Joe. Joe, we have a guest. Yeah. And he's so handsome. <laughs> he used to be our model. He's also a wow. photographer. Wow. Mm -hmm. So exciting our episode today. Yeah, I'm very excited. This is my first trip to San Francisco with John and with Ben. You know, whenever yeah. I frequent San Francisco because I have a sibling who lives there. But this is okay. my first time with you guys. And I've heard so many things about our guest today, aside from very uh, being very good looking. He is uh, he has so many talents. So I'm excited to uh, meet him today and let's share his ganap in San Francisco, everyone. Yeah. Our guest Portoli was born in San Jose, Costa Rica. He earned degrees in both photography and cinematography while studying abroad. With over a decade of experience in the industry, he has worked as a model, head photographer, and cinematographer for various fashion houses, magazines, designers, and campaigns. From Costa Rica to Panama, Mexico, and the United States, his photography has continued to gain international success. His work includes head photographer for Wilhelmina Models Panama, Wilhelmina Fashion Photographer Los Angeles, politician and celebrity photographer of stars like Aisling Derbys and Paula Rojas, Mexico, Carolina Herrera Fashion House Photographer USA, and among others. He is also the recipient of numerous film festival awards for his cinematography in various short films, feature films, and documentaries. Some of his clients include Instagram, Facebook, Wilhelmina Models, Carolina Herrera, Kenneth Cole, Tommy Halfiger, Diesel, Nicolas Filesola, Group Saint Honor, Multiplaza Group El Roble, and Ocean Grand. He recently has had two exhibitions in the HQ at Instagram in San Francisco, California. And again, Mr. Edwin Vargas. Well, I am a fashion studying at Academy of Art University. So as a student, it's a good opportunity for us to learn how to make money after graduation, do a whole commercial shoot. Very good teamwork. 
Hi everyone, my name is Angelique Vendette and I am the designer and founder of luxury faux fur line called Petit Poussin. is a little bit of 70s and 90s denim on denim. It was so much fun. It was a lot more chill than I thought it was going to be. Everyone's vibes were on point. Me on point. <laughs> <laughs> Have just everyone on the streets be wearing it and owning it and rocking it. I think that's that's where I'm seeing this collection go. Wow, that's awesome. We for sure are gonna <laughs> see this all over the US and of hopefully all over the world. And like we totally can wait to see this product out there. And like congratulations and thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm really excited and thanks to all the students. You guys are the best. Bye. John, thank you guys for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. In yeah, here. welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. It's so nice to meet you, Ed. It's nice to meet you. You are very good looking. <laughs> <laughs> you are too, actually. You're beautiful. You know, when, <laughs> when we first saw him in, in LA, we approached him and we said, can you model for us? And yeah. he said, yes, okay. <laughs> right, right away? Right, yes. right away, Edwin. So you didn't, yeah. um, you, didn't get, you didn't get scared of John. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I look like beautiful. an angel. <laughs> <laughs> we were you, didn't say right, you, yeah. you didn't say yes right away, Edwin. Well, they had very beautiful designs, so I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we wanted to have a photo shoot, but we hope that you can photo shoot us. Edwin, because you are a good photographer. And tell yes. us about you. We missed you a lot, so I think we miss a lot of things about you. So tell yeah. us about yourself now. Right. What yes. have you been doing from the last time you've seen them for five years? Um, five years, it sounds like a long time, but they run so fast that when you realize, it's like, whoa. <laughs> but um, it's been a very uh, interesting time. One of my main things, I got my citizenship, so I'm now an American. Congratulations. Wow. Great mm -hmm. uh, out of behind this camera, um, I've been doing some of the modeling as well, but mainly focused on behind the camera. And um, in San Francisco, my journey focused half and half as a director of photography and as a photographer as well. So I focus a lot uh, in the beginning doing um, short films. Um, I was doing documentaries and web series and different uh, small um, productions um, until I fall into one of my largest. I was doing um, a feature film um, that it got now released on Amazon Prime. So mm -hmm. everyone is welcome to look at it. And uh, it's ready to purchase online and watch it. Uh, it's a very interesting um, a dark comedy, mm -hmm. how we call it in here. It got premiere um, last year, so it's available for everyone to watch. I also got involved um, into a big um, documentary that I did in collaboration with um, the director at the photography department, Adrian Pau, and also Robin Lasser, which is the director at San Jose State University Photography Department as well. And they both been working on these dress stands for over 10 years. And I got to do a behind the scenes of their last sari dress stand that um, is about this beautiful um, 15 tall um, dress that a woman wears in a big, in a big tent. Yeah, let's talk um, about that wow. documentary about your sari. Yeah. So what's this all about? 
So we did an art installation in front of the city hall here in San Francisco. Um, and that was, um, that was about um, the, every weekend on San Francisco, there is Sundays where like they close the streets for art and then the museum, the Asian Art Museum was part of it. So we had the honor to do this art installation and I was filming all the behind the scenes on how to put this beautiful tent together. But also I was interviewing the women that, um, that donate the saris to cover the interior of the tent. So that was a very interesting project because I get to understand a little bit of their culture and how those women feel in the U.S. when they are wearing a sari. So then the idea of the documentary, it was to talk a little bit about how women in the U.S. get to be um, it, treated in a wrong way just because of the cultural clothes. So then I did that approach and the documentary got exhibited inside of the Asian Art Museum, which was a pretty good honor to me to see my work in that majestic museum. So that was a pretty cool uh, project that I was working recently. You have been very busy. Sorry, John. So, sorry, it's uh, from India, right? Sorry. Yes. yes. It's yeah. a national, national costume, costume of the, the Indian women. <laughs> yes. So yeah. I think because of the uh, culture, Western culture in the in the United States, the, so people wanted to wear sari, but mm -hmm. unfortunately they wear it in the wrong way. I think yeah. that's what you want to focus in your documentary. So mm -hmm. to educate um, other people. countries, other culture, how to really wear and how you know um, they, they develop the, the sari as, yeah. as a national costume. It's very colorful, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, beautiful yeah. colors. and. Um, it, it turned out very good and now I'm working into the second phase which is extend the documentary to make it a long uh one hour and 20 minutes plus long so my idea is to end up selling the documentary to netflix so um, now more people are able to see it so that's my ultimate goal so then the idea is to fly back to um to india mm -hmm. and now record more on the other side of how they create the sari and what is their beliefs and get more deep into the history of the sari the whole idea is to like educate the american country and teach them a lesson of what is the culture behind the sari exactly so, uh -huh. exactly. so we're excited about we want to we we want you to show it in our Ghana tv the, yeah. the, the yeah. number yeah. the yeah. Part one of the documentary. Yes. So we're yeah, because we have, yeah, we have a lot of viewers from <laughs> India as well. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. awesome. Day of the art exhibit, um, we were able to wear a sari as a pants, as pants for men. Okay. So that day, I was able to wear one myself, wow. and uh, it was very comfortable just to be walking <laughs> around and the many ways that can be worn these days. So. It's very interesting that it's yeah. not only for women. You yeah. can be because actually I wanted to come up with my collection uh, inspired from a sari, sari. for oh. my next uh, summer collection. You that know. would be beautiful. Yeah. Uh, John, I remember we were uh, talking about the rich culture of India, especially they have a lot of good uh, fabrics and uh, yeah. they don't want the sari. So, you know, this is really interesting to, uh, especially to all the Asian uh, countries and as well as in America. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. <laughs> Telling us about this Instagram. Can you yes. tell us about that? Mm -hmm. So I was very fortunate to work with, um, with Leslie Smith. She is the event planner at Facebook and she got to invite me first to do an ex an an exhibit of my work at the Women's in Tech event. And this event, it was about um, a empowering women that work in tech. And I've been lately working in many projects that are related in women empowerment, a, like the Sari Dress 10, like this recent event, these two events that I did for Instagram. Um, so I've been focused a lot these last years of my career in you know dignifying the beauty of a woman in many ways so it's been my major focus so when this project came to me 
I was very excited to create this mural. So I create a mural of, um, not run, like I think it was like four meters by six, very large. And then I did this collage of all, all of my work. And um, I put it all together trying to uh, simulate the color grading of Instagram that is like a rainbow full of colors, mm -hmm. full of um, vibrant wow. colors. So then I put together all these images um, and they use it with this beautiful shirt in the middle full of the flowers that I have previously photographed. And they use it as a background to take images in the event, which was pretty, pretty cool. And um, it turned out like a gorgeous event. I'll show you all the images of how they Wow, we're excited. Yeah. We're excited to see it all. <laughs> because as you know, guys, cool. yeah, Edwin is one of the best photographers in oh, uh, San Francisco. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much for saying yeah. that. And he was and given then, a lot of good opportunity. Like, you know, working with Instagram, wow, that's so big. <laughs> yeah, no, it, was a, it was a great opportunity. And like, I found that, you know, one thing will lead to the other one. And then it came the next opportunity to work for Instagram. But in this case, they invite me to work at their headquarters here in San Francisco. It's a gorgeous building uh, downtown on um, a, where... Um, they have their offices and like most of the activities are happening um so this time it was an event again for women empowerment but this time for the black community and mm -hmm. it was for in collaboration with the sister circle group that um the sister circle group um focus on women that work in tech and they're always trying to make sure their rights are here, that the women feel good in their workplace. And this event specifically was to, uh, to showcase how women, uh, black women, uh, were the hair different ways in the history of as a black woman. So then I was showcasing the different hairstyles that women can wear. Um, in the workplace. So I was able to reach out to different um, workers that actually work at Facebook and Instagram. And they were, they, I invited them to come to my studio with their beautiful hairstyles. And I was very lucky to have beautiful, different hairstyles to come to my studio. And then I photographed them into my lightning. And, but they weren't models. They didn't knew what they were expecting, what to do. But I feel like, Everyone has a beauty, and you don't need to be a model. You just have to yeah. come, and I'll make you look at the most beautiful person you already are. And um, that was a very one of my favorite projects because majority of my my career, I've been used to, to always work with professional models. And this challenge it was to make regular women look like models, and they turn out to be so much beautiful than the beauty that I used to photograph. So yeah. I print these images in 40 by 40, which is pretty large size. And then um, we displayed in the entrance of Instagram, they have these pillars that change colors and the wow. neon pillars that change color. So then I put the images in between them. And then when people were walking in, you could see how the colors transition and they will be changing so it was a very very uh, amazing event we also had the honor to have um, the head of instagram um at the event so it was pretty awesome to like you know talk to him and like seeing people enjoying my work so it was a pretty pretty awesome time and you know many opportunities came after big events like that so I'm very excited for that. Oh my God. Wow. It was so nice wow. to that was that. so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're very happy for you, Edwin. Yeah, like, because, um, you, you know, Anjo, Anjo, it's like uh, every woman, every, you know, uh, they wanted to photograph uh, professionally. And, yeah. you know, Edwin is doing that. And, you know, that is really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you call this, Edwin? Are, are some of the, the works you mentioned? 
can be mm-hmm. seen in your uh, personal account in Instagram. Would you want to share your Instagram account to everyone yeah. watching us? Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, you're all welcome to look at my Instagram. It's Edwin Vargas. And also, mm-hmm. you'll find the link to my website where you can see all the work in detail. And yeah, follow me so you can keep watching what I'm doing. <laughs> follow me <Yeah>. too. <laughs> follow me. <laughs> yeah. Let's go back to the models that you had, the regular women. I think that's the trend now, Edwin, that uh, the designers just are using already the regular women. Real models women. are men. Because, you know, like people, when they walk on the runway, if you find models, models, Mm-hmm. And they'll see like, you know, we can't wear, they they can only wear them because they're models. But yeah. if I'll see my body figure, yes, like a, a model who has the body figure of a regular person walking on the runway. So they felt like, yo, oh, I can wear the same thing as his, she, or he or she's wearing, right? So what you did was so spectacular by using regular models and make them beautiful in your photograph. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I noticed this spring 2020 majority of the runways out there that every single uh, famous designer had at least one curved model and also one regular person on it and a lot of diversity too which is what it's what we are trying to change in the world right now is to show people that everyone has a chance to showcase their beauty no matter who you are no matter it's what what um, problems you had in the past or or you know a difference um in terms of race so this is what part of the change that we're all living in 2020 is be is be more humans and realize that we're all beautiful yes exactly i agree i think uh the key words that you guys mentioned are simply empowerment and really Really, um, what do you call this? Um, most of the companies right now, most of the products are really um, looking for real women or real people to advertise their products because we're. I think we're already done with um, generation or the time wherein all models are used or ce- even celebrities, actors, or professionals are used to advertise because. Um, because of the notion that ordinary people cannot use the products. Yeah. So now, and it's also, I think, because of social media, uh, these content creators or who you call um, influencers really mm-hmm. did something big no, for, for companies. Because they're real people. They're not celebrities. But through their um, vlogging or blogging or through the contents they create through their uh, social media accounts, uh, started this this trend of using real people, yeah. you know, for, for yeah. companies. So that's yay hey for us, right? Yeah. <laughs> yay hey for us. So we yes, can that's a yay hey for us because we're not we're not um, we're not celebrities. We're not actors or we're not um, models, as John yeah. said. And we are now given a chance. And um, yeah, and I guess that's also the story behind Ganap TV. You know, yeah. we're not. The three of us are not a really professional hosts, but then, you know, we're, we're, have, we're getting so much love and support from everyone. Yeah. So thank you for, for this trend right now. Yeah. Yes. I just recall Joe and John. Uh, I don't know if you uh, see the advertisement of uh, Calvin Klein. Mm. Yeah, the, the plus size women. They're using plus size, plus size women. Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah. Yes. So that's yay hey for all of us. I mean, I. I yay hey for Edwin. Yes. <laughs> yay hey for Edwin for giving yeah. all the chances, yeah. all yeah. the people, the re- real people, real uh, people. given a chance. So okay. you know, we hope you can so come much, here and yeah. photograph us. Photograph <laughs> us. Yes. Uh, I would love to. <laughs> 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 and uh, you know, uh, Edwin, uh, what else? Because you know, as we can see, there's a lot of uh, things that you can offer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, you know, we heard in, about you're talking about your book. Yeah, we're so excited yeah. about it. <laughs> Tell us about that. 
So I've been in this quarantine time that, you know, it's been challenging for many people. Um, I find something different on this time. I find myself and I find time to explore <clears throat> ideas and things that I probably never had time before for my busy schedule. So when I find in front of my computer with all of my hard drives and my work, I was to start, you know, organizing my previous images and putting it all in the right place. And then I start picking images that I probably never choose before. And then I start working on it, re-edit it. And then I start putting them together on a separate folder. And then I realized like, hmm, it might be time to, um, to publish my first book. So I start putting together 10 years of work and um, this is um, a sneak peek of uh, what I'm planning to uh, show in this fall, if everything continues going well. I'm planning to do a large exhibition of my work. And at the same time, people will be able to purchase my first book and I calling my first decade. So here's a sneak peek of what it will look at. Um, it's a leather cover and then it will be like full bleed pages of my most wow. recent work oh that I'm planning God. to like wow. have people the chance to like uh, purchase the coffee table book and have it at their house as as part of like you know decoration and also to be inspired from my work so um, that's something that I've been recently working on and I'm very proud of it because it's like my little baby here <laughs> that yeah. I want people to be able to like see and um you know, enjoy at home. And it's like a little bit of the journey of my career through these through the years. I first started working in Panama, doing a lot of uh, photo shoots for magazines. And I have a lot of models, editorials that I start a little bit into the black and white that then it start turning into like these natural colors. And then it moved into the most recent, which is San Francisco and it goes with all the neon colors and like very vibrant and and beautiful um, colors that I've been working recently so it kind of like gives you that journey of color through the book if you get to look at it so I'm very proud to like showcase that pretty soon so I hope that you guys will be able to come and then you'll have a invitation to the show. Yes. <laughs> wow. Behold, yes, you're going on your mind. launching. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, been, it's been a little bit hard to pick the date yet because things keep moving back and forward. So we don't know yet when we are finally will be able to get together. But in the meantime, I'm putting ready the book. I'm putting ready the photographs. I'm planning to do large images uh, print and exhibit frame so then people are able to go to purchase too. I have an idea. Yes. Why don't you launch it virtually? That would be so that would be a we very can, we can we can launch it here in the oh. TV. Yeah, you can, you can, no, we launch it. <laughs> That's a really good no. idea. Yes, like 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 here now we're talking here. Like uh, we're gonna have a big launching of your book. Uh, so you're gonna show every pages of the book and how it transitioned from black and white to colorful. Um, mm. You know something like that. But it's gonna be virtual. Uh, but you know we can't show it first because maybe other people will copy us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually think that's a great idea. <laughs> Yeah, because you know we don't know yet how far this pandemic will go. So, mm -hmm. uh, for for the meantime, so you we can do something like that in in launching your book. Because now we're gonna have also our virtual international fashion week. Oh wow! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's amazing. I so, love what you guys are the doing. New, the new norm. <laughs> <laughs> so we have yeah. to embrace this uh like uh, this situation. So just like you, you are doing yeah. a lot. Uh, during the pandemic so we have to think a lot of things uh, in order to you know to to face the, yeah. the real situation yeah the new yeah. normal the new I normal. Agree. yeah I agree no um I feel like you know this semester it came the big challenge um you know with my students and I wanted to talk a little bit about um, about them because it's been um, mm -hmm. a challenge for them as well to distance learning at home 
and um, you know just empower them to to make sure that their creativity doesn't block from being home. You know, especially the class that I teach at the Academy of Art University, it's very um, it's very um, studio orientated, where I teach the students how to use these um, industry standard cameras that are very professional. It's called Phase One, and it's a very high end camera that is used to do the main photo shoots for campaigns for Sephora for all the brands that you see on a magazine mainly photograph on medium format so I teach my students how to use that and how to behave in front of these large photo shoots when you have to work with great directors and clients that are on set and models and stylists makeup artists so that's part of like the production that they learn in my class and this semester, since everything had to be reduced to be at home, it was a huge challenge, but um, that didn't stop me from continue teaching them, um, the, you know, different ways to still be creative. So as my, as my, new, um, my new title at the Academy that I recently got promoted uh, as a technical director of the photography wow. department, I was able to help the students sending them equipment home, which is something that probably, um, you know, previous um, a persons on my role would be afraid to do, but I took the risk of like, you know what, um, you are in this university, you need the equipment, I'm gonna create packages and you will take it home. And then the students were able to take these very expensive cameras to, with them to make the work from home. So they, end up you know showcasing so much amazing work even though they were all limited with the beautiful spaces that we have in the school but that didn't stop them from creating and i find out that the students creativity went went really high and you would see the their final results and it was pretty amazing to see what they're able to create with you know with nothing at home with sometimes without models they were doing still live compositions or they were working with other products to photograph and they did very very amazing work and that's something that i've been um, putting a lot of my effort is now that i got to a point in my career that i had so much knowledge now that i'm able to share that every generation that graduates um, and get certified with phase one and capture one on my class. Uh, I feel very proud um, to show, a, to, you know, to inspire them to become um, photographers with so much skills to be ready to work in the industry.